Hey guys, this is Tasha from Travel and Tash, and today I'm in an area called Hansung, Hansung University, Gidam, and I'm headed toward um, an area later today called Dongdaemun. And I'm meeting up with my friend Sue, and so I just want to to just show you what we get up to and, and what, a little bit more about what it's like uh, here in Seoul. Last weekend it actually went to minus 12 and so today it's not so cold and the sun is shining which is really nice but I've seen a lot of people with masks on their face which is kind of common to see here um, and the reason that people do that um, is often because they are trying to keep out the yellow, what they call yellow dust, which is the dust that flies over from, over from China, uh, pollution. And so essentially, <laughs> I don't usually check those reports before I leave the house. A lot of people do, but for me, usually the indication that I have that the, that the weather is really poor is first of all, looking at the haze that you um, that you see when you look at the sky and second of all noticing all the masks of the people around you Korea is great in autumn and it's great in spring but winter is extreme it's really really cold not as cold as some places in Canada and uh, it, yeah it gets to around minus minus 12 the other day last weekend and I'm sure that it will get colder than that these are the post box, post boxes. <clears throat> it's a little reminiscent of England, but different shape and different size. People often wear what looks to be like a duvet or a quilt like wrapped around them in the form of a, in the form of a, um, a full length coat and you know sometimes that people look so puffy that they look like penguins just waddling along because these coats are so thick and it's essentially just to keep out the cold um, I haven't <laughs> I haven't succumbed to that to that particular um, trend just yet I'm trying to stick it out with a what I call a regular coat. I'm going to show you what's quite common to see here is actually seafood. clients will point out what it is that they want to eat and um, and so in that in that way the fish is as fresh as possible I do sometimes see um, fish beginning to to give up on life and beginning to float upside down and stuff and you know that they're on their way out so the tanks are obviously I guess a miserable last day or so in the fish's life or the crab's life and I feel a little sad for them but I guess it's one way to to avoid having mass amounts of um, seafood wasted if the client doesn't if if the if the restaurant doesn't isn't really busy that day Right, here's a little glimpse of where I am. That looks like a market over there. A lot of these, there's a lot of these um, grates or grills here on the floor and so you really have to watch your footing to make sure that you don't um, accidentally um, trip up on them if you're not looking in front of you and a lot of people actually love riding these scooters lately it's particularly popular so now it looks like we've arrived at a train station University stations up ahead. 
I noticed a market so I'm going to hop into the subway and come up on the other side, the other exit. <laughs> Now that looks like it's savoury. It's interesting though because a lot of Korean um, bread type products have a lot of sugar in them and so sometimes you think that you're getting something savoury but often time it's actually sweet too. And it looks like they've got a sale on. 500 won is about 50 cents. I like to send my sister socks from Korea because they're often got really cute designs on them. <laughs> These things here are usually made of egg and they are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> mm, pancakes. I love the street food that you can get here in Korea and Seoul. Oreo churros, that's different. <laughs> These little coverings are to kind of protect customers um, from the chill, the outside uh, winter chill. There's a lot of underground parking in Seoul and part of the reason is because it's just so, so busy. There's so much traffic and this, the population is huge that one way to deal with congestion is to just have all the parking underground. So I want to head over here and <laughs> one interesting thing about Korea is sometimes you want to cross the road and it's difficult to actually figure out how to actually get across. I went to Keb the other day, this bank straight ahead. Um, I'm interested in opening, I'm interested in opening a bank account with Keb, but they told me that if you want to open a bank account here that you actually need to go to your most local branch which is either near your home or near the location of your work and therefore um, when I went uh, last week to a branch I believe it was in Shinsa 
they said to me, is this your local branch? And I said, no, <laughs> you know, I, I live, you know, I live in Gangnam. And they said to me, well, you have to open up a bank account there. It's the law. And I was like, okay, you know, so one, one good tip to know. So the time is 4.05 and it's already feeling a little cooler. I've already put a hood up <coughs> and I'm on my way to meet my friend Sue. I want to talk about um, recommendations for finding your way around Seoul if you're new to Seoul. What I usually do is I've downloaded an app called Subway, Seoul Subway, and it's a little uh, yellow icon with a symbol of a train on it. And what this app does is, is it allows you to plan your travel from one from one station to another station, your your station of um, basically your station of departure to your station of arrival, and it also calculates the time for you. I've found more often than not it takes longer. It takes about five minutes longer than what what it anticipates you'll take because sometimes your connections don't sync up perfectly or whatever the case is and then you also need to factor in your time getting to the station and and so on. So I highly recommend that app. I also use, when I first arrived in Korea, I really used heavily the uh, Google Maps because I found that just navigating my way through this enormous city um, is, it can be challenging and although a lot of the signage is in English not everything is and so it really really helps to sometimes know just which direction is you know such and such location that you're going to. Neva is essentially the Korean equivalent of Google and uh, a lot of people here use that to search for uh, articles, to search for um, whatever it is that you'd usually use Google for including um, maps. In addition, there are um, apps that you can use to find your buses, to find where you can catch buses from one destination to another. Now, I currently don't use um, a bus app, and I should be. So, if you have any advice about which apps to be using to navigate your way around on a bus, please drop it in the comments below so that you can share that information with everyone. Although I have a terrible sense of direction, um, I've lived in Seoul for two and a half years now and so I, I feel fairly com comfort comfortable and confident finding my way around um, but what I often use is uh, the street signs like for example you know the traffic direction signs you know the traffic's heading in this way I just look up at the sign like for example I'm going to Hansung right now and I haven't bothered to crack out my Google Maps because I know that Hansung is in this, this direction and I'm going to guess that because I'm on a main road that I probably can find the train station on this very on this very road itself because it's a main uh, central road so just looking at my surroundings and looking at the width of the road it looks very very central and therefore, I can guesstimate that Hanson University Station is likely going to be on this very road itself. I just want to briefly tell a story. Um, what happened at the uh, subway um, just literally about an hour and a half ago. So I was waiting at the doors. The subway here in Seoul is glassed off so that basically nobody can commit suicide or jump on the track. And so um, I was waiting at these glass doors. I was first in line and, and then there was another one, another lady over to my right. And she was waiting to also uh, line up and get on, the, uh, get on the next train. And then a fella comes with a big old buggy of stuff I don't know what the hell he had in there but he's like an old boy he's I don't know maybe 60 years old and he's got all of this stuff in there and he's with a lady and he just jams himself between the two of us and I said to him and I don't know how to say it in Korean but I said to him if you're there how is everybody gonna get off the train <laughs> he seemed indignant and he seemed kind of annoyed and I think it's because generally women my age don't are not uh, 
that they don't scold old men <laughs> and <laughs> just to put it bluntly and so um so what happened was <laughs> the lady next to the lady he was with she was translating for him and he still he still seemed angry but she was laughing and so i could understand that she said saram which in korean means person and so i knew that she was translating but she was just laughing and, and she was like oh thank you thank you and i was just like thank you <laughs> you know for getting out of the way and then <laughs> You know, he, he finally, he seemed a bit angry, but then he subsided, like he's, you know, just telling from his facial expressions, the way he was looking at me furiously. <laughs> anyway, um, so then the train arrived, and about 30 people poured off, including like, massive suitcases and this and that, grandmas, everything. And it's just like, oh, you know, why, why don't understand why people just jam themselves in the middle of the thing and just expect that everybody's gonna walk around them. Oh, look here. Typical. So if we look at the price here, if we can find a price. $1.99, reduced from three nine eight I don't really know how to distinguish the caliber of those type of jackets I want to see if I can last the winter without buying one <laughs> Motorbike. He was actually using a motorbike to transport his cardboard. Oh, like a tra yeah, like you know, like in Thai um, in Thailand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because oh. his motorbike made a lot of noise, right? Okay, so do you think that that's one of the the gateways to the wall? No, oh, yeah. It's so absolutely it. gorgeous. This, 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 this gate from this gate. Yeah, you can hike on. Bukaksan, so Bukad behind of the Tomade. Okay, Bukha the Bukaksan. 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 Yeah. Bukaksan. Oh, Bukaksan. Right. And there is behind the, the mountain or behind of the, the blue house. Yeah. So guys, I'm with my friend Sue. And Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she's also very shy. <laughs> yeah, I can outside. But she just explained to me the mystery of those things, those grates in the middle of the floor. Sue, I don't know if you heard her explanation. Sue yeah. explained that though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading up here. This is a third place. Yeah. So we are heading to. Excellent. So from here to Dongdaewon. Okay. So we're going to head up these steps here, and what time is it? Is it around 5.30? Yeah, 5.35. Five, 5.35. Those massive grates in the middle of the ground are where the air conditioning units um, extract air from the subway that runs beneath um, Seoul City itself. Here is the ancient wall of Seoul, Seoul city. It was surrounded by, I guess, a fortress wall. And it makes for, oh, I'm already out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> We've only just started. <laughs> it makes for a wonderful, wonderful evening walk or daytime walk, but extremely scenic. Oh, Sue, I'm so glad we're doing this. Mm. And the weather is actually pretty mild. Oh, yeah. It could be way worse. Right, but I feel like I'm panting. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm the panting weather. like a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, a lot of grandmothers, I think, are fitter than me. <laughs> At least Korean grandmas. <laughs> Yeah, we're so lucky with the weather. Okay. People were collect collected from different provinces. Uh -huh. um, so it's that a kind of uh, mandatory service for the public, public house, uh, construction. Okay, it's a public construction. Mm -hmm. So there was a mandatory service, which is kind of similar to the way that the military yes, recruits exactly. <laughs> uh, men today. And 
the, the reason why some of the stones are inscribed is because people inscribed the, the name of the province from which they came mm -hmm. um, when they came to Seoul to work mm -hmm. on this particular project <laughs> yes. under the direction of one of the Joseon kings. Mm -hmm. Look at that, Sue. Mm. The S shape is mm. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Also, this place, oh uh, yeah. This is it called Ihua Mao. Ihua, like Ihua, Ihua University? Ihua, Ihua Town. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of sea war painting in this town. So this is. Iwa. Guys, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching and hope to see you on the next adventure. Take care.